So back in 2016, when I was but a wee high school super senior, um, I would like y'all to understand something. I had a very high level video game theory about the biological nature of Pokemon. Um, but you need to understand. Now those of you who can read the screen are very confused. Those of you who can't read the screen are waiting for me to read it to you. I promise it relates to Pokemon. Look. I'm going to begin reading it, and then I'll explain. Two mature worms, they're talking about earthworms, lie next to each other, head to tail, and they bring their reproductive organs into contact. The male cells on each worm fertilize the female cells. When the worms break apart, each fertilized worm secretes a mucous substance that helps the egg capsule form. Unlike bird eggs and salamander eggs, worm eggs are actually a cocoon around developing worm embryos. That's important for you to know. It relates to Pokemon. Canonically, in the anime, Pokemon eggs often reflect their parentage or which Pokemon they will hatch into. However, in the video game, oftentimes, in Pokemon Go, they have these colors, but in the original, original video games, they all look just kind of like Yoshi eggs. This green one. They all looked like two kilometer eggs. The table below shows how each egg of the Pokemon, I mean, each breeding group of Pokemon is interconnected. It gives an idea of how easy it is for Pokemon to learn to move from another Pokemon. They used, they used to have a graph, but there are, are now too many connections to make it readable. There's the Amorphous Egg Group, the Bug Egg Group, Dragon, Fairy, Field, Monster. Pokemon can have more than one Egg Group. And only the ones in the same Egg Group may breed. That's how you get situations where Skitty and a Whale Lord can produce an egg. And if they reproduced like mammals or like vertebrates, that would be a problem. But if they reproduce like earthworms, it's less of a problem. This is taken from a Game Facts forum. It says the Pokemon species will always be the same as the female parent. Unless breeding with a ditto, it will be the same as the non-ditto parent. That's how you can get genderless Pokemon to reproduce. I'm sure they have another way of doing it canonically in the wild. But in the daycare, you need a ditto sometimes. Uh, the Pokemon daycare for the uninitiated is a pretty bad daycare because they let the Pokemon there have children. I, they let them produce offspring. That's kind of disturbing. But uh, anyways, each Pokemon species is a part of one or two egg groups. The Pokemon can breed with any Pokemon that share the egg group, as we previously discussed. Pokemon can inherit moves from their parents if that move is an egg move meaning a move that's specially marked to be able to be heritable. Or if the child could learn that move just by leveling up without evolving or being taught with a TM, I believe. Egg moves are simply a list of moves for each species of Pokemon that can be inherited through breeding. You can find what egg moves a Pokemon has along with its egg groups on Bulbapedia and Cerebi.net. Uh, this person prefers Bulbapedia but many swear by Cerebi. So, your Pokemon's talent, there is natural talent and there is skill. It is not always the same for every Pokemon in the games. Your Pokemon has a natural talent called the IV. Those are, random, those are randomly generated between 0 and 31, although the parents can hold an item that will allow a certain amount of their IVs to be passed on. There will also always be a certain random element to what skills your Pokemon inherit. That will be important for my theory later. So the IVs are random or inherited. Whereas the EVs are all up to the skill and the experience that you collect. Okay, let's recap. So Pokemon can inherit IVs. Pokemon always inherit non-male parent species. 
let me fix that. Non-male parent species. I believe we should be using the word morph instead of species, and I'll get to that in a second. Okay? So, really, oh, and they inherit knowledge. <laughs> Sorry. And they inherit um, some skills. Well, not, let's just call them what they are, moves. They inherit moves. So they inherit some IVs, usually it's just one move, some IVs, one move, non-male parent species morph. Okay, so this is the entirety of Pokemon genetics. You might get some natural skill from your parents. Like just copy over like one of their traits randomly. But the rest of your traits are pretty much left up to chance, so you could have, like, totally untalented parents and be born an Olympian. It's uncommon, but it could happen. Um, you can also have... You also definitely are... Whatever species the closest thing to a mother you had was. Um, so whoever the egg mother was is the same species as you. So if your dad was something and then your mom was a ditto you become the same as your dad because your mom wasn't a ditto when she did it with your dad um there's only one game where two dittos can breed and i think that's a design decision they should undo because how are we going to get more dittos it's kind of depressing right but anyways yeah so okay let's re-recap you inherit some ivs from your parents you become the same morph as whatever morph laid your egg, which means you will never be the same species as your dad unless your mom is a ditto or your mom and dad are the same. And you will probably only inherit one move from them and only under very specific circumstances and it's not guaranteed. Alright, so... Lichen have two means of reproduction. For those of you who don't know, a lichen is basically a fungus that holds a uh, type of pond scum hostage. And it's basically a mushroom that pretends to be a plant. It, it actually can photosynthesize, though. Um, so there's this cycle. But today we're going to be taking a look at the asexual reproduction cycle. You see... What happens is the lichen breaks off chunks of its body along with the little pond scum prisoners inside of it. Now, that's intriguing because I believe that's how Pokemon reproduce. However, I believe there's the added caveat that male Pokemon can only produce these green parts, whereas female Pokemon release both the green parts and... So this is how female Pokemon reproduce, and this is how male Pokemon reproduce. And then they mix together. And instead of an algae, like a pond scum that's solar powered, I believe the Pokemon have a thing that's like pond scum, but it's powered by... I'll show you. Instead of algae or pond scum, the Pokemon lycoforms utilize infinity energy as their main metabolic resource. Infinity energy is a unique resource similar to magic in the Pokemon, but it's science, it's science fiction magic in the Pokemon universe. It's a naturally occurring phenomenon and is seemingly ever-present. Pokemon have the power to tap into this energy, obviously. Similar to our real electric bacteria, um, because pond scum is a type of bacteria in some cases, uh, which are bacteria that directly consume and excrete electrons, I believe those are the things that make Pokemon tick. And they also contain move data and small amounts of knowledge, and the fungus contains the form of the Pokemon, which is how Pokemon are so able to breed. They're all secretly the same species with slightly different forms, creating 
egg groups are more or less the Pokemon equivalent of ring species. Pokemon can breed with a Pokemon that can breed with a Pokemon that can breed with a Pokemon that can breed with a po but these two cannot breed. You can't go from yellow to blue, but you can go from bl blue to purple to maroon to red to orange to yellow. So that explains Pokemon biology in my humble opinion. But that's just a hypothesis, Matt Pat. A game hypothesis. Alright, bye everybody.